What's going on? We're going to complete or carry on the cyber defense pathway from TriHackMe. And in this video, we're going over setting up Nisus vulnerability scanner and using it to scan for vulnerabilities with a deployed machine. So we're going to go over the steps for installation and the steps for navigating and scanning hosts. So the first thing you will do, make sure that you are connected to a TriHackMe network. Then you will be installing the scanner. So to install the scanner, first we will have to retrieve the activation code. So basically, uh, there is a link provided here. You can take this link and open it. So in this link, you will fill out your name, surname, and the email. Once you fill out the information and submit it, you will receive an email containing the activation code that you will need to go further with the installation. So after that, after you register, you will be redirected to a download page. The download page looks like this one. Um, okay, this, this is this is down, download page. So depending on the operating system you're using, uh, if it is Mac, Linux, for me, it is DPN64. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. I agree. Save that to desktop. And once it downloads it, we're going to copy that file to our Kali machine to begin the installation process. Let's take this to the right. Minimize this one. So here, ls go to try hack me folder. Yes, yes. Okay. So the file is still being downloaded. Okay, copy the file. Okay, so with the file being transferred to my machine, I will begin the installation process. So, ls cd messes clear. Okay sudo the package and then dash i and the name of the file. So then the file is in preparation for to be installed. Okay, now as you can see, the installation has finished and we can just start the scanner. But before that, we have to start the associated service. So bin system city I'll start Nisus. Okay, let's take that. Sudo paste. Okay, now we will navigate to the CRL.
So here, just replace that with localhost or leave it opened. Okay, advanced. And accept the warning. Accept the risk and continue. Okay, so we will select this essentials, continue. Just register your information. I'm gonna type my name, surname, and email. So the activation code, you should receive it by email. Actually, I requested two activation codes. The activation code will look something like this. As you can see, this is the message, and here you will take the activation code and go with it. But I, think, I don't think this one will work since this came to a different email address, so I will try with it. Continue. Oh, it worked. So username, my name, password, simple as that. Submit. Okay, now it will download the plugins. So just take a cup of coffee and wait for this to finish. So after initializing and compiling the plugins, you will be greeted with this screen to start a new scan. So of course we can go ahead and start a new scan, but before doing any of that, it is worth noting, or it's worth going over the some of, of the functionalities we see here in the buttons or the screens. So the new scan, we click here, we can initiate a new scan. Now, in the policies, as you can see, if you click on policies, in the policies section, we can create custom templates to be tailored for custom scans. So according to your environment, according to the uh, scope you have, and the and according to the knowledge you have on the target, you can create a custom template to scan specific servers, specific um, ports, specific applications whatsoever. Now, by going over to plugin rules, As you can see here, we can create a rule to hide plugins, edit plugin, or, or add a new plugin. So if you can if you could click on new rule, you can see we have the host, number, expiration, and we can also hide the results or enable the results. So as you can see here, for example, if we have scanned a target, and of course, you know, Nessus uses plugins to scan the target. Now, if you, if you want to hide a specific plugin, all you have to do is to reach out the plugin ID, put it here, and uh, specify it for all the hosts or a specific target whatsoever, and specify an expiration date, after which the plugin will reappear in the scan, and here you select the settings. For example, if you want to hide the plugins from the scan, you select hide these results. Or you can specify specific um, severity for the plugin. So that's for plugin rules and that's for policies. Also, we can also create a new policy here and depending on the scan type, we can go, we can go over all the scan types here. But first, we will get back plugin rules, community. Okay, now let's move on to scan types. So if you go to policies and here, new policy. For example, host discovery, you know, self-exploratory, it is for discovering and finding out the live host on the network. Basic network scan, it's good you start the scan if you want to scan single hosts or multiple hosts. It's much like in-map scan. Now, malware scan, you know, if you have a host or endpoint that you suspect it it is infected with malware, you just create a malware scan. By application test, similar like Nikto or application scanners like OWASP, ZAP, credential, batch audit, it is kind of scan where you want, if you have a specific service and the service needs some authentication in order to scan it, so we select credential batch audit.
and the rest of scans are customized to specific vulnerabilities or CVEs, as you can see from the names. All right, so let's get back to my scans, all the scans, and let's move on to scanning. So here we start the machine. Now, while the machine is starting, let's answer the questions. So, what is the name of the button which is used to launch a scan? Now, launching a scan can be done from new scan. So, new scan. What side menu option allows us to create custom templates? So, the custom templates, as we remember, are created in the policies section. So, what side menu? Policies. What menu allows us to change plugin properties such as hiding them or changing their severity? Plugin rules. Is in the scan templates section after clicking on the new scan, what scan allows us to see simply what hosts are like? So, if you get back here in the Scans, my scans, or all scans, new scan. The host discovery is used to find out the live hosts, so it is host discovery. Now, one of the most useful scan types, which is considered to be suitable for any host, let's get back. Suitable for any host, scan type is basic network scan, which will scan the host or, or the subnet and find out what is running there. So basic scan. What scan allows you to authenticate the hosts and enumerate basic updates? I don't think I got the question. What scan allows you to authenticate? So it's credential batch audit. So it requires you to authenticate with username and password. What scan is specifically used for scanning applications? Application tests. All right, so now let's take the IP and scan the target. So get back here, since we have a single target, and we know it is live, we can either go with basic network scan or application tests. But since we don't know anything about the target, we don't know what are the running services on the target, so we cannot just opt for application tests or malware scan or scan for specific CVEs. We will have first to uh, get introduced to what is running on the target. So basic network scan, Name, THM, my scans, target is one target. Let's go to schedule. Schedule allows you to run the scan on specific time interval or based on specific frequencies, which is useful for if you have, uh, you know, high network congestion. Let's go to discovery. So ports to scan, scan all the ports, custom or let's choose all the ports. It will scan from 1 to 65.535. So it is better to start with this, these kind of scans. So discovery, assessment, scan for no vulnerabilities, scan for all vulnerabilities, scan for all vulnerabilities, complex, quick, custom. So here, if you have custom type of scan, you can just customize the options here based on the application. But since we don't know anything about the application, we're going to get back and choose default, which will scan for the vulnerabilities. Let's go to report, advanced, scan type, scan load bandwidth links, custom. So since we are connected to a VPN network, it is better to scan low bandwidth links because we are connected indirectly or you know, using a VPN. 
credentials. So here, if we have a specific username and passwords for SSH or Windows, can just specify them here, the plugins. Here are the plugins to use. So based on your knowledge of the target, you can select specific plugins to use for your scan, or you can leave the default option to use most of them. So you can hit save once you are satisfied with the options. And here we can just click on launch. Once we launch the scan, it will take some time based on the host and the running services. And then you will get the scan results and examine the vulnerabilities. Let's see try ask me questions. Scanning. With a basic network scan targeting the deployed VM, what option can we set under basic to set a time for the scan to run? This can be very useful when network congestion is an issue. It is scheduled. Under discovery, set the scan type to cover ports 1. What is this type called? What is this type called? Port scan, all ports. Let's get back. Yeah, it's actually this uh, port scan. So the answer consists of three words port scan, all ports. Wrong. Let's pretend we create a new scan and we find the option specifically or literally what was, how it was. So discovery, ports, port scan, all ports. So we missed the parenthesis. What scan type can we change under advanced for lower bandwidth connection? So if you remember, it was the scan low bandwidth links. With these options set, launch the scan. Okay, we launched. After the scan completes, which vulnerability in the port scanners family can we view the details of to see the open ports on this host? After the scan completes, which vulnerability in the port scanners family can we view the details of to see the open ports on this host? So I want to see the open ports on this host. Let's see if the scan finished. My scans on demand still running. Usually, usually these scans are kind of slow. So if you can't wait, we're going to just head over now to a new scan and choose web application tests to test specifically the all applications running on the web server. So we can type THM HTTP. The target IP is this one. Discovery custom, we're going to choose, let's see here, ping methods, other services. Port scanning. Okay. Okay, it is options as they are. Go to assessment, scan for all the vulnerabilities. Okay, let's save that and run the scan as well. So the web application scan has finished. Let's examine and discover what has happened. So going here to vulnerabilities, we see the family and we see here the classification. So we have info and we have medium type vulnerabilities. Medium type vulnerabilities normally require your attention because if you leave them or they, if they are left unpatched, they may lead to high critical vulnerabilities and maybe or could be critical uh, sorry high then critical 
So you have to pay attention to this kind of vulnerability. So as you can see, we have backup files disclosure, browsable web directories, and web application potentially vulnerable to click jacking. Okay, so let's um, click on this one. So backup file disclosure, it's possible to read the following backup files. File config slash config. Okay, let's take this and see what was there. So indeed there's a backup file. Let's save this file to the room link, the room uh, directory. Let's go try hack me. Let's save that. Okay, what do we have else? So that's the first vulnerability found. Browsable web directories. So these web directories can be browsed. Among them is DVWA, which is the damned vulnerable web application. I hope YouTube will not flag my word now because I said the word damned. DVWA, CSS. All right, so these are kind of directory browsing. So the last one is web application potentially vulnerable to click jacking. And there is here, as you can see, an introduction about the click jacking. So as you can see, the remote web server does not set an extra frame options, response header, or a content security policy frame ancestors. And you would see these kind of vulnerabilities in typically most of the web servers running these days. Because many sysadmins do not use X frame options or the content security policy in the Apache headers, thus allowing the possibility of a click jacking. And the click jacking happens on the user side, not on the server side. So if you read through the description, this could potentially expose the site to a click jacking or URI redress attack in which an attacker can trick a user into clicking an area of the vulnerable page that is different than what the user perceives the page to be. This can result in a user performing fraudulent or malicious transactions. The following, this is the vulnerable page. Don't use a click jacking medication response header and contain click clickable events. Now you can patch click jacking easily by adding a security header or content security policy to your Apache configuration or uh, whatever your web server. Let's go back. Let's see the other issues. Web server office file inventory, web mirroring, application site map. All these are normal actually. The version, web server multiple issues. Let's click on that. The first one, web server transmits clear text credentials. This means that the server does not use HTTPS. If it was using HTTPS, it would transfer the credentials or whatever sensitive information there are uh, using the HTTPS, which is uh, which is using public key and public key encryption. Web server directory enumeration, web server robots, information disclosure. Most of the web servers have robots, TXT, which is accessible by uh, crawlers, human and bot crawlers. So not an issue. All right, so that's the result of the scanning the application. Now, let's see what is this backup file. Not required in the, in the room, but let's take a look. So config, PHP, it's PHP configuration file. So sudo mv config, to config. So this is the PHP file. If you are having problems connecting to the MySQL database and all of the variable, try changing the BTP server. Okay, so this is PHP config for the database. So this is database configuration. As you can see, database name, the user, and this is the password. So I guess we can log in to the database now using these credentials. Let's try it out.
sudo mysql-h let's grab the ip dash u app dash p so the password from the file or the leaked file is vernables Cannot connect to my SQL server on. That should be options out. App. One more time. So it seems like we cannot connect to the database unless locally. If you're having problems connecting to the MySQL database and all of the variables, are correct. Try changing the DB server variable from localhost to fixes a problem. Okay, that is management system to use. So it is configured to be, or to work locally. All right, but if you manage to get access to these kind of machines or manage to get access to the target uh, using some exploit, you can just log in directly to the um, database server and dump the tables. Let's confirm the scan results with a simple nmap scan. So go nmap and target. We just want to correlate the scan results between NetMessage and NMAP. Simple scan would do it. Okay, so as you can see, we have port 80, only port 80 open, which confirms and corroborates the scan results um, by Nikto. Now, if we scan for only the database server dash p 3389. So it is closed. That's why we couldn't connect to the MySQL server technically. So let's get back now to try hack me, see what are the questions we need to answer. So what is the plugin ID of the plugin that determines the HTTP server type and version? So if you get back, we saw that the HTTP server and version is determined by a plugin. So if you click on that, we see the plugin ID somewhere. This is the ID. So let's try to answer with that. Wrong. That determines the HTTP server type and version. So we, I think we're supposed to find this from the web scan, web application test scan. Plugin ID or server issues. So this one didn't work. Well, one, two, one, nine. Sitemap mirroring. Plugin details, ID, didn't work. It was weird actually, this plugin has determined the version and the name. But in track me, it is wrong. 
with okay let's see here I don't think so directory enumeration nope multiple issues type and version so here we have different id let's try this one oh this one worked. okay what authentication page is discovered by the scanner that transmits credentials in clear text so we saw this issue earlier if you get back to the scan multiple issues web server transmits clear text credentials and the page is login.php so this means if we fire up wireshark or any kind of man in the middle tool it will find out the <laughs> username and password if someone was logging in inside the network what is the file extension of the config backup it was the back What directory contains example documents? This will be in a PHP directory. So we saw earlier that there is a directory browsing misconfiguration on the server. So if we go to the, the details of that discovery, we will find the page. Let's see here. Documents, examples. Funk. So without this, what, and lastly, what vulnerability is this application susceptible to? That is associated with X frame options. It, it was click jacking. And it is finished.